JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JD Traders Espresso with me, that is Charles, because today is the 25th of July, 2022. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session where we're gonna have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But yeah, before we do that, as always, um, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, a quick mentioning of our JOD YouTube channel, uh, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JODBrokers.com website, which you can check out, and I believe you can find some useful information here. Now then, um, okay, so as I said, welcome, yeah, welcome to Monday. Um, everybody who's joining in, good morning. Who else, who's going to be watching this video as a recorded one? Uh, well, good morning to you too as well, and yeah, uh, welcome to the last, um, last uh, Monday of July 2022. If you want to make this day special, <clears throat> that's what you can, how you can look at it basically this is the last Monday of July of 2022 and yeah so <laughs> welcome everyone okay guys oh back to risk disclaimer not a bad thing but let's jump back into the charts um, okay Nikkei 225 guys so today uh, saw a bit of a decline of course uh, followed by the US uh, uh, de little decline on uh, on Friday um, I'll get to the uh, to Nasdaq in a bit here, but um, everything is still in line with the idea that I've mentioned before. So before I said that, look, I mean, even if it declines here a little bit, as long as it stays somewhere above that 208 EMA, then yeah, we could continue aiming for the upper side of this uh, range here, where the um, where the index is currently sitting at. So yep, at the moment, long story short, uh, we will keep an eye on the. Uh, on this area, first we'll, I'm going to keep an eye on this 27,524 territory. Just out of curiosity, I want to see if this is going to if this is going to carry any significance or not. Um, but to be honest, um, I think that it's so tentative that I mean I can draw a bunch of other levels here just in case. So for example, like this one, the 27,389 level here, marked by the high of the 13th of June here. So and on and on. So basically, in other words, still like I said, the same uh, idea remains valid that as long as it stays somewhere um, above this 200 EMA, yep, I'll continue uh, I'll continue aiming to the upside uh, Hong Kong's Hang Seng index okay so this one drifted below the subside line again so once again it proved that this upside line is not really something to keep an uh, keep an eye on for too much um, instead I, at the moment we can reuse this line and draw something else here for example another short-term uh, tentative downside line which so far is um, this is, is working out okay so uh, either way guys it's not actually even the, the the trend line that you need to be focusing on it's mainly the level because um, if you're looking for some downside here well I would prefer to wait for a drop below that 20,216 territory uh, such a break here would confirm a, a forthcoming lower low and uh, yep we could then start aiming for that lowest point of May of this year and near the 19,179 level with the up Side. Now, with the upside, I would say I would like to get a nice good push here above this barrier, above this to 21,111 zone. 
and then yeah we could go for this uh, this downside line taken from the high of the 28th of June so I mentioned this before um, let's see if that's gonna work out I'm not gonna drag this one way too much to the upside <coughs> excuse me but um, uh, yeah, if um, if it pushes through this uh, 21 uh, 21,111 territory, I'll aim for this downside line at first. Um, the ASX ASX 200, the Australian index. Um, okay, so this one moved nicely above all of these barriers, the ones that I mentioned. Um, still, we have some room towards this downside line, taken from the high of the 20th of April. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're if you're looking for some higher levels, then yes, a break of this downside line is needed, and then uh, we will go for this uh, 6,920 zone, or even, um, or even a little bit higher towards the 108 EMA or the 208 EMA. Um, at the moment, um, I I do understand that there could be a possibility maybe to see a decline here, but in that uh, in that case, I will keep an eye on that uh, 21 day EMA right here. Um, if if um, if it holds, then we could see a nice rebound here and a push back up. If it breaks, we could see a move towards this upside line. But either way, guys, it's for me to get comfortable with um, yeah with the downside. I would need to see a break of this uh, short-term tentative upside support line taken from the low the 20th of June, and then maybe also a drop below that 6,521 territory just for that extra confirmation. The German index, DAX, and uh, yeah, and this one, um, as if you remember last week, I talked about this idea that maybe, just maybe, we could be seeing here a possible bullish flag um, with um, with our pole being this candle here, the 19th of July candle, and then we saw a bit of a decline here, um, a bit of a correction, I would say. Uh, we're still trading above that 21-day EMA, which kind of supports still the, uh, slightly supports the upside. Side. But either way, guys, <clears throat> even if that's you know if that's the case, even if it is a bullish flag, still uh, the safer option is to play it from around here, from a breakout above the thirteen <coughs> excuse me thirteen thousand three hundred and seventy eight territory, um, and then we could go and aim for that one hundred eight EMA. Um, again, because this could still drift a little bit lower here, maybe even test the 21 day EMA, maybe give us a false breakout and then, you know, sharply reverse back up. So I'll, I'll, we have seen this uh, happening, you know, several times. So uh, rather, like I said, rather stay on the safe side and uh, I'll keep an eye on this barrier, uh, this whole highlighted territory right there. There. With the downside, I would prefer to uh, wait for a drop below that 12,828 territory and then go lower. The cash index is currently sitting at around 13,185 level, um, basically below, below yeah, uh, Friday's close. Uh, but still, still uh, comfortably above the 21-day EMA. Um, NASDAQ 100. Okay, so we had a nice decline here. Um, everything, I would say, uh, is still in play. Still, everything is in the same. It was, it was sticking to this. We're still sticking to the same scenario. Um, as I mentioned before, that I said, look, I mean, if we pop through this upper side of the uh, ascending triangle pattern where we were previously, then yeah, we'll go higher. But even if at some point it decides to retrace here as long as it stays somewhere above this 12,176 territory right there. Uh, not specifically the level, but the area around it. If it stays somewhere around here, then yep, a nice rebound here could be possible. We could continue aiming for that 100-day um, EMA together with that uh, 12,898 territory. And then we would take it from there. Um, at the moment, uh, everything is, like I said, still in, pl in, 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 in line with the analysis here. Um, the cash index is actually sitting bang on and where it closed yesterday so yeah uh, in quite interesting there um, let's see how today's day is gonna play out nothing really much exciting today on the economic calendar to be honest um, I don't know what can move the market today unless there's something else that's gonna come out um, maybe something on the political side but um, yeah at the moment guys uh, let's see how all this is gonna play out today 
Um, the if you're looking for something maybe a little bit safer, maybe short term, you can keep an eye on Friday's high uh, near the 12,663 territory. A nice good pop above it would confirm a forthcoming um, a forthcoming higher high. Now jumping into DXY, the dollar index. So um, okay. Uh, Looking at this picture here, I mean, uh, I said before that, look, I mean, even if it drops below this 21-day uh, EMA shown here as the yellow line, the next target is the upside line. In general, this upside line was my target. However, we didn't really reach it yet. And uh, my question here is, will we actually reach it and let's say will we actually respect it at the end because um, at the moment what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a bit of a pause and this 21 day EMA is really doing a good job so for example if eventually this uh, 21 day EMA starts failing maybe this would uh, this could result in a some sort of a bigger uh, decline for example you know a stronger move to the downside um, but then even even this upside line might not even like you know uh, play out here so um, I'll keep it for now uh, just out of curiosity but to be honest like I said at this point guys I think it's uh, I'm not gonna focus too much on this upside line um, what I'm gonna focus here instead um, first of all of course the 21 day EMA and this 106.40 level right here uh, a nice drop below it yep I'll, I'll start aiming to the downside if it continues to trade below it then yes um, further declines are possible here guys especially if it also falls below this 105.79 territory and then yep that's where more uh, sellers could join in <clears throat> with the upside um, given that we are still above let's say if we're taking into consideration this upside line we're still above it so there is still hope that we could see a move higher but um, again as I mentioned before I would prefer to see a push above this 107.48 level right here and then kind of go to the upside um, okay, gold. Uh, gold uh, here. It's uh, it managed to break this downside line on Friday. There we go. Okay, so that's quite interesting. Now um, we also managed to clear this 1722 territory, 2021 territory, 2122 territory, um, and we managed to stay above it. So a lot of things seem to be pointing uh, more towards the upside. And also keep your eyes on that DXY. If this continues to drift lower, then yeah maybe um, maybe it could have its uh, positive effect on gold um, but again lately I mean uh, they didn't really correlate that much so but uh, okay I mean let's let's see how uh, let's see how this is gonna play out here um, in terms of the upside now I, pro I just marked a nice a good uh, area potential good area of resistance near the 1744 45 level in between that area um, so I would say this way if we somehow uh, continue to trade above this downside line uh, then yes I'll aim higher I'll aim for that 1744 44 45 area or this 100 day EMA um, in terms of the downside this is where I think I need to remove this level here and instead mark some new ones so in terms of the downside now what I would prefer here is probably to see a drop somewhere below this Mm, 1714 territory somewhere below that and uh, then yeah we could go a little bit lower here um, let me just probably reuse this line somewhere here for now um, and then yeah we could aim for that lowest point of July the current lowest point of July again near the uh, 1682 level um, but again I need to see that drop below this 1714 zone mm, if we do fall below it then yes I'll maybe consider a bit of a move here lower so um, uh, but of course we'll take from take it from there if we do see such a move but again at the moment uh, you can see that the uh, the commodity is trying to remain above this little short-term tentative downside resistance line um, it's currently acting as a good a little trampoline here uh, or as I should say could be acting as a good a little trampoline but Again, uh, let's uh, be very careful, be very cautious. I mean, the market is a little bit unpredictive. Um, well, to be honest, as always. Um, but yeah, as all, but in that case, guys, I mean, yeah, always be cautious and have your stop loss in place. 
delete high oil um, so drifting nicely to the downside um, so we're moving here uh, closer to this 93.56 territory and uh, I would say mission accomplished because previously I mean I talked about this hurdle here I said that look if we drop below this 100.92 territory my next target is the 200 day EMA then maybe this 94.59 level and maybe this highlighted territory but the only thing is that I'm going to be very careful right now because with this highlighted territory because um, maybe this is forming a possible descending triangles and yes according to all the TA rules these tend to break to the downside but maybe it could you know bounce around here a little bit inside the pattern for a while until it gets closer to the apex here and uh, then you know when then it could break out but um, again I've, I've seen you know these triangles breaking out in the opposite direction um, sometimes so that's why until we get that breakout I cannot really let's say get very comfortable with the downside so yeah it's leaning towards the downside but maybe it can rebound here maybe push back up to this downside line and then and then you know the old, all the pressure will start will start around here um, and uh, yeah so that's why I would say if you're looking for some lower levels guys wait for a drop below that 93.56 zone right there nice good drop below it yep and may attract more sellers now Ethereum, um, it's stalling for the past like what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for about a week now it has been uh, stalling and uh, just not doing much and this is where I said to you previously guys that look, um, yes we got a nice move to the, uh, to the upside here, we broke this downside line taken from the high of the 3rd of April. Um, but um, yeah, we need to see a nice good push above that 1700 level. That's for me the priority right now. I would actually prefer to wait for that. Uh, if we do get that pop, then we might see also maybe, we might also see a pop above the 100 EMA right here marked as the green line. So so just be careful with that uh, side. Um, although maybe some of you might say that this is could be, this could be something of a bullish flag here. We have our pole, we have our kind of flag waving here yes that is true however um, as always wait for that confirmation break because um, I'll get to Euro CHF in a bit but um, yeah that one's interesting um, but yeah wait for that confirmation break guys I mean like I said I'm leaning I'm cautiously leaning towards the upside but uh, a breakout is required because it, it still drift lower guys and if it falls um, somewhere uh, below this territory here this uh, 1282 zone uh, which I've previously I've this was the upper side of the range where the crypto was trading in uh, but now I would say if it drops yeah if it drops back below this hurdle then yeah I'll, I'll consider maybe another move to the downside and maybe this time it could be a bigger one ADCHF so okay um, I talked about this pair last week if you remember in one of my videos and uh, yeah I said that look maybe this, this is forming a nice ascending triangle pattern and okay this is one of those moments guys where I said like with oil for example yes also maybe it could be forming here a not a not the per most perfect ascend descending triangle here but you know it could still rebound here. <clears throat> this one was a little bit more accurate, more interesting, but look, at the same time, we came very close to the upper side here. It looked like, yes, it's time to break it, but no, there we go. We dropped lower, we moved back to the uh, upside line here, the lower side of the ascending triangle. Um, however, however, uh, we're still holding on to it and we're still holding above this um, upside line. And uh, if we, mm, if we, kind of remain above the subside line and there is still hope for the bulls here we could see a nice rebound um, back up but if um, if you also remember what I was saying that look if we break this upside line mm, then yes we could consider maybe a move lower here a move towards this 0 0.6594 territory and basically then we could start aiming or looking at this more for a, as a range uh, than you know something else but hey uh, let's not rush into anything. Uh, for now, let's keep on monitoring this. This could be quite attractive later on, but let's just wait for it. Um, AUD USD. So um, this idea is working out so far. This is quite 
great, I will say. I mean, look, we're drifting back down. This downside line worked out perfectly. So previously, when I looked at this, I said, look, if we pop above the 0.6854 territory right here, then yes, I'll go higher, uh, I'll, I'll, but I'll only aim for that um, this downside line. Um, and uh, we, yep, we got a perfect test. So I would say, yes, mission accomplished halfway because the other uh, idea was that or the, the continuation of this idea was that uh, look if we test this downside line if it provides resistance we could see another slide and the only um, issue that I have here right now and this is where I cannot really, really like you know contradict from a, too much from this ADCHF as well because maybe let's say if this is positive and it's ready to you know pop higher then maybe <coughs> AUD is also working in that uh, in, in that direction as well so um, and the fact that we are still balancing above that 21 day EMA that of course gives that the uh, little reassurance that you know um, we could see more upside uh, for this one but uh, again if you're looking for some upside then I would say uh, wait for a pop up of the 0 0.6977 level just to be a little bit more on the safe side because a nice good move through this area will confirm a forthcoming higher high and then we could aim for that 108 EMA or this 208 EMA. I'm not going to drag uh, I'm not going to draw any levels yet. I would like to aim for these EMAs instead. If we do pop above that 0 0.6977 territory. Until then, the upside scenario for me is kind of off the table. Um of course, subject to how it's going to trade further on here, but still, this is the at the moment this is my option for the upside. Uh, for the downside, now um, this is where I need to shift my arrow a little bit here. Um, and uh, if we are looking for some lower levels, guys, a drop below the 0 0.6854 territory is required, um, just to be a little bit more on the safe side, because at the same time we will fall below some of the key support levels, and uh, of course at the same time we'll be placed below the 21 day EMA. Now, uh, USD CAD, guys, USD CAD, um, I would say, Mm, looking at this picture here, and um, if you're if you're if, if you're looking for some lower levels, I'm still sticking to the same idea, guys. I'm still saying that yo, know, we need to see a, 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 a clear breakout again through this uh, through this barrier, through this hurdle, because on Friday we saw a decline, but then it stayed above it, so it kind of it just gave us a false, nice little false breakout. And look, I I kept on mentioning this last week the whole week I said look I mean maybe if we can break this uh, we could then aim for that 1.2819 territory or 1.2820 uh, which we managed to almost reach so I would say kind of you know it's a, it's a good result here um, but then the index oh sorry the index the pair failed to stay above this above this hurdle uh, or Stay, fail to stay below this hurdle there we go oh, it's early morning for me I mean I'm already uh, getting confused here with my own stuff but anyway um, USD cat guys again um, with this I I I mentioned this last week again one thing that look if we struggle with um, let's say staying below the 1.2860 territory uh, we might see a rebound yes and we're getting that rebound right now mm, as you can see my upside scenario is only from around here why because um, what I'm considering here is a as I mentioned before as well um, that we could see a rebound here from this area from the so-called neckline and we could see a push higher and if it let's say struggles to move Move above this barrier somewhere or stay above this 1.3013 level somewhere above this area uh, maybe we could see a nice decline back down again and then we will for form a nice potential head and shoulders pattern with the neckline being this 1.2860 and it kind of continues to prove itself as a good area of support so if we eventually break that uh, this neckline okay that's where it could become quite interesting and we could go uh, for further declines here guys and uh, this is where like I said more s uh, sellers could join in and maybe we could end up moving towards this upside line here taken from the low of the 1st of June 2021 because don't forget that overall we're still trading above it um, so any move to the downside here up until this upside line could be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of uh, buying um, 
GPPUSD. So, um, okay, this one's stuck. Um, it's stuck in this little range. So, monitoring it very carefully. And this is where the arrow needs to go higher a little bit here. And uh, yeah, if we um, if we push through the 1.2056 territory right here, then yes, I'll aim for this downside line. Uh, taken from the uh, this downside line taken from the high of the 21st of February and then I'm gonna take it from there I'm not gonna drag this one way too much higher because maybe this could end up being something like this again something similar as with AUD USD so just to be a little bit more on the safe side like I said for now that's the kind of game plan for the uh, for GP USD now Euro CHF okay so I mentioned at the beginning of the video so look uh, this is one of those moments where I keep saying that you know wait for that confirmation break guys because um, when I said to you mm, that on the it was it no wait which one was it uh, yeah, the, the German index, yes, the DAX. So, similar story. I mean, look, I mean, I've mentioned there that um, wait for that confirmation break, although you think that it could be forming a possible bullish flag. Um, still, uh, you can see this is a good example of what, how it can happen, how it can end up being. So, it, initially, we popped above this upper side of the, you know, falling channel. Okay, great, more buyers started jumping in boom 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 here they started attacking but there we go I mean they failed to move above that or should I say failed to stay above the 0 0.9944 level and that's what we are getting right now and this is what we got we got that huge decline here on Friday it moved lower and it, it's kind of back again to this um, lowest point of July or I should say the current lowest point of July because we still have a whole week to go through and you know maybe this could actually break out lower and then go below that 0 0.98 territory and uh, basically go for a, a new low for uh, for July so let's be very careful on that one um, let's have a look at the monthly chart just in case um, okay so yeah it's uh, it's a nice decent candle already um, but yeah, yeah let's of course like I said let's not rush into anything at the moment what I'm struggling like I said I'm, I'm although I'm I was initially more positive than negative I had to admit on this one but hey uh, this area provided strong resistance and uh, but I, one thing that I wasn't wrong on was that I said to wait for a decent move above this barrier and then we could go you know higher <clears throat> And that's why you always have to have your stop loss in place. Um, and uh, now the question is, can we drop below the 0 0.98 territory? If we can, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, it could attract more sellers into the game. And finally, Euro USD, guys. Um, so this one is stuck to its 21-day uh, EMA from underneath. Um, and uh, of course, I'm not saying anything. I mean, it's, it seems that still there is potential for this one maybe to move a little bit higher. But at this point, I would like to see a strong move above that 21-day EMA. If I'm not going to get that, um, I'm going to be very careful with the upside. Although my upside is still only up until this downside line taken from the high of the 10th of February. But hey, still there could be some room to fill up. Um, but for the downside, now this is where it's interesting. If we drop and stay below this 1.01, 22 territory that's where um, I'll get a little bit more excited with uh, lower levels and uh, we could um, go uh, towards the lowest point of July here near the 0 0.9952 level and then we'll take it from there um, so yeah be very careful with that and uh, I would say yes if we drop below this hurdle below this 1.0122 then yeah I'll go uh, to the downside if we're gonna pop above the 21 day EMA that's where uh, it could it open it could open some possibilities for the bulls but then we will mm, we'll be very careful with some of these other obstacles like for example this previous one that I mentioned the 1.0340 the one the highlight the, the highlighted one but if that gets cleared yes I still uh, the sellers have a good chance to step in somewhere near this downside line as I've mentioned before Okay, guys, um, I'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, guys, your views, your likes, your comments, everything. I really appreciate all that. So um, in general, I thank you very much for joining in to this session. I hope you found it useful. If you want to catch me tomorrow morning, as always, at Traders Espresso, 6 o'clock GMT time. For now, have a wonderful trading day. Stay safe. Have your stop losses in place, and everything will be fine. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.